for Wheeling University Athletics. I'm Zach Ziegler. It's time for another edition of the Patrick Stanton Show. Currently joined by Wheeling University head cross country coach Patrick Stanton. And Patrick, you guys are getting ready for the Lock Haven University Invitational this week. Coming off a strong run at Lewis Crossover. Talk about that last race and what you saw from your team. Yeah, we did a lot of things well at Lewis. Uh, the men really had a good day. We didn't race all of our guys just because of like sickness and things like that. We didn't want to force it if it just wasn't there. Um, but we still raced three of our guys. Um, they all had, had really good days. Julius had a huge PR on a, on a tougher course um, than, than Louisville. Um, still ran about 35 seconds faster, broke 30 for the first time. CJ ran about 45 seconds faster than he did at Louisville. Again, on a tougher course and just a week later. Um, Isaiah had a really solid day. He, he ran probably about a similar quality race that, than he did at Louisville. Um, it's a little bit of a slower course, so the time was a little bit slower. We know that there are some spots where we could have executed a little bit better, um, which just means that we know that we can run faster. But he had a quality day. Um, really, all, all three guys, I think, executed pretty well um, and learned a lot, which is huge. Um, it's always tough racing back-to-back weekends. Um, the weather was cold. It was windy. Um, but they still kind of brought their game faces and, and ran tough. The girls, we did a lot of things well. Um, our, our game plan for that meet was really to – we wanted to go out smart, and then really execute in the back half of the race because that's where we struggled at Louisville. So we really wanted to execute in that back half of the race, and I, I told them especially when they hit three miles, that's 1,200 meters to go. That's where we really had to start kicking things into gear and start gearing up for our kick, essentially, because the last like 400 meters are all downhill. So we can't save it for that. We have to start our kick before that. Um, and they executed that very well. Like the, Their times for the last 1,200 meters of that race were insane. Um, the issue was we didn't get out as aggressive as we wanted to. We were a little bit too controlled, um, really, in the first mile and then even more so over miles two and three. Um, so we just need to be a little bit more aggressive going forward. But they learned a lot, and I think that they saw, even when they're tired, they can really still execute and, and run a lot faster and surge, even when their bodies are telling them that they can't. So it was a big learning experience. And on the men's side, you mentioned Julius a little bit ago with the big PR. Talk about what made him so successful and how he was able to get out to as good a race as he did. Really, he's just been racing better and better uh, throughout the season. He he really isn't used to racing this distance. He ran cross country in high school, but it's it's been a couple of years. He didn't run cross last year as a freshman. Um, he focuses on the multi and track. He, he he's going to do the hep and the deck. Um, but one of his strongest events in that is the fifteen hundred. So like he wanted to, he wanted to get back to running cross, but it's still it's been a while for him. Um, all all guys struggle from high school to college, making that jump from five k to eight k. Um, it's a it's a much bigger distance. Um, so Julius, especially having that year off in between, is a little bit of an adjustment period. But he's been working out great. Um, he's been in you know improving his times and his workouts consistently throughout the year, um, learning how to kind of grind through the middle, murky middle of the race that we that we how we talk about it, um, where you're in that uncertainty and you have to like really just rely on your confidence and you rely, rely on your fitness when your body really doesn't want to. And he's just been getting better and better at that. And on the women's side, Savannah Anderson, another strong race for her. Caroline Fodor, a strong race. Talk about those top three, Savannah, Caroline, and how they're kind of meshing together. Yeah, they've been, over the last two weeks of workouts, that pack has been looking phenomenal. Really, the whole team, our, our last couple of weeks of workouts has been our strongest of the season. Um, we're really kind of coming along at the right time. Um, but particularly, to answer your question, those three have been running really well as a pack. Um, they've been feeding off each other seeing that they can run with each other so when one makes a move the others can can just be more confident that they can go even when their bodies are saying no um they've been encouraging each other they've been pushing each other and and they know that for us to be as strongest as we can be as a team those three have to really be on their games and those three have to be stronger than a lot of other teams top threes so um they've just been encouraging each other and just working really well as a group Currently joined by Wheeling University head cross country coach Patrick Stanton. And Patrick, something you don't normally see, you guys raced back-to-back weeks last time. How is that going to help your athletes having those two consecutive weeks of racing followed by the off week heading into this one? Yeah, we really, really wanted to do that um, because we really wanted to race at Louisville. Um, you know, we typically have two weeks in between most of our meets, um, but Louisville kind of falls on an off weekend for us. Um, so we wanted to race Louisville, and then we wanted to get back on a normal schedule from there. It's tough racing back-to-back. Um, so you're usually not quite as fresh. You're usually kind of sluggish going into that second race. Um, but cross country is a sport where you really just have to tough things out when you don't want to, when your body's not feeling it, when you're not in a good mood, when you're, when you're not having the right attitude mentally, 
still kind of getting on the on the start line, refocusing and bringing your A game, whatever whatever your best is that day, bringing that to the table. Um, so it was just a really good lesson in that, and I think that they did really well with it. And as you guys prepare for the Mountain East Conference Championships coming up here in early November, this is the last warm-up. What are you guys really working on to get ready to p- compete against some of the best in this conference? We want to run fast. This is a fast course, um, and we're getting to a point in the season where like we can we can really start to run fast. We're we're sharpening the wheels a little bit. We're coming down a little bit in volume, so they're not feeling quite as like that that heavy workload. Um, and we're really like I mentioned earlier, we're really coming along at the right time. Um, this is as you, you know you mentioned we have MEC coming up, and then we've got regionals kind of down the line. Um, this is our 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 fastest race that we're going to run um, at this point in the season. So we really wanted to take advantage of that. Um, this is the fastest 8K that the guys will run all year. Um, this would be comparable to regionals for, for the girls running 6K. Um, so we really just want to get some PRs, honestly. We want to put ourselves in a good position. We want to get out aggressive. Um, we want to run smart, but we also want to put ourselves in a position to succeed and take some risks. And finally, as you guys are coming down this stretch, you being a former cross-country runner, talk about what advice you give your athletes now as they prepare for this final stretch run with cha- conference championships and regionals coming up. Focus on your fitness. Rely on that confidence that you have in the training that you put in over the last three to five, six months, you know, from the beginning of the summer, basically. Um, that body of work is inarguable. That body of work has to be what you rely on um, through that middle portion of the race where everything is uncertain, everything is hard. It, it gets hard sooner than you think it's going to. Um, you don't know what's going to happen in terms of weather conditions, the course conditions. You can't control any of that. But you can control your fitness. You can control your attitude. Um, and that's what you have to rely on when you're through that like uncertain period in that middle of the race. Um, so we really focus on that. We focus on having a really good mentality in the third quarter of the race um, because that's the toughest part. Thanks, Patrick. Good luck this weekend. Can't wait to see you out there. Cool. Thanks, Zach. For Wheeling University Athletics, I'm Zach Ziegler. <laughs>